Welcome to the Razor TSL. Uh, this is Artosis, and I am glad to say we have a special guest commentator with me here today. Uh, Day 9, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Sean Plott, also known as Day 9, and more commonly known as the younger brother of Nicholas Tasteless Plott, everyone's favorite English voice of StarCraft living in South Korea. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, let me just talk a little bit about myself briefly, so that way you can trust me when I'm doing the cast. Um, I've played StarCraft competitively for about eight years now. Uh, I got second in WCG USA in 2004 and 2006. Uh, I got first in 2005. Uh, I mean, uh, and I guess my, my favorite accomplishment is getting first in 2007, um, the Pan American Championship over Testy in Cancun. But uh, most importantly, though, I am a total StarCraft junkie and fanatic, so I am rather pumped for this Protoss vs. Protoss today. Why don't you introduce the players for us, Artosis? Yeah, well, uh, we have two of the very best Protosses the foreign scene has ever seen. Uh, we have Drake, the ex-pro gamer from Poland, and he's up against Noni, this huge rising star out of USA, the only American left. And these two are just masters of PvP. I mean, you know, how did they get here, Sean? Well, let's just take a brief look at their stats. Let's go over uh, Draco first. Um, Draco was uh, the latter uh, number two ranked player at the end of TSL. He had a record of 116 and 42, but in particular, his Protoss vs. Protoss record was 62 and 20, which was, of course is a very stellar record. Um, on his way to the uh, semifinals, in the round of 32, he went 2 and 1 with Horror and then 2 and 0 with Cloud, and then crushed the epic Ukrainian hero Straylock. 2-0 in the round of 16, and then continued his domination over White Rob, 3-2. So up to this point, Draco really just has not been doing a lot of losing. And I mean, I think you've probably played with Draco a little more than I have. What, what sorts of uh, stylistic things are, are unique or very strong about Draco? You know, Draco, being an ex-pro gamer, you know, he's, as I've said before, his mechanics are just top of the line. You're not going to find a foreigner with better mechanics than Draco. I mean, he does not miss a probe, he does not miss a pylon, he doesn't miss a production round. So, we're going to see a lot of macro out of Draco. But, you know, recently in the TSL, we've seen a lot of DT builds out of him. I mean, he went DT builds against Cloud, he tried him versus uh, White Raw a little bit, and it's, it's been working out for him so far. But uh, if there's any player that has mechanics close to Draco, it's uh, definitely Noni here. He's also a very mechanical player, so this is going to be really exciting to watch. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you with that. I mean, having played Noni a lot before and just have watched his play a lot, you'll see that he just likes the sort of um, repetition in his play. He likes to play his own game in a straight-up solid fashion. He just has this flawless macro, excellent control over his units, and really controls the game flow quite well. I don't think Noni or Draco either are known for any sort of unorthodox strategies, but both of them are just so strong and so solid that I just think it'll be really interesting to see if either player is going to try to outsolve the other one, or whether we're going to go see some or unorthodox builds. Uh, before we go and talk about the maps a little bit, I just want to briefly introduce some of Noni's stats and his path to the center. He was the number 11 ladder player with, again, an amazing record of 90 and 26. And he was 47 and 4 versus Protoss. Or excuse me, 47 and 7 against Protoss. And I'll come back to that in just a bit. But in the round of 32, he went 2 and 0 with Infernal, then 1 and 2 with Brat, and then finally 2 0 with Infernal to get the last spot in his group. And he proceeded to go 2 0 with Brett and 2 1 with Gosia. So clearly, having gone 4 0 total with Infernal, that's or excuse me, 3-1 with Gosia, thank you. Uh, you'll see clearly that since he went 4-0 with Infernal against Protoss, and his record is 47 and 7, he's just very, very solid at the matchup. I mean, the most significant thing about that record is just that he only has 7 losses. That's an enormous degree of perfection and precision of execution to be able to pull that off. So yeah, I'm really excited to see these two Titans clash. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't care if you're bashing D-minus newbies on iCup. If you can go 47-7 and seven in Protoss versus Protoss, you are a solid player. Because lots of people, you know, they think that it's a lot of randomness with build orders and whatnot. But Noni, he is a very safe player. Uh, he does safe builds. And, you know, he just he relies on that macro as it goes longer and longer into the game. So anyways, let's uh, start talking about this first map that we're going to see them on. It's going to be Othello for game one. Noni versus Draco, and Othello, we've seen some interesting PvPs here so far. Uh, if you all recall, uh, JF played here against Cloud, and 
just the positional disadvantage of Cloud really worked in JF's favor. He really pressured him with the Reaver in uh, Cloud's main base and then flew it right out and pushed the front. So, you know, something like that could really change how uh, these two players play this matchup. Yeah, Othello just really has a fascinating dynamic to it. Because for the most part, it is a pretty mineral-rich sort of map. I mean, there's just a lot of resource nodes all throughout the whole map, except unlike a map like our point, Othello is quite open at the same time, so in addition to having these easily accessible expansions, there's a lot of places to do lots of cute tactical moves, like all the high ground locations, the fairly wide um, choke to your natural, even that neutral building, all allow for really interesting strategies right from the outset of the game, and also allow for these really intense macro games where both players are going to have a lot of opportunities to screw around with each other and even get back in the game if they lose a lead. Indeed, and uh, you know, the random cliffs that are all over the place as well, if it goes into the later game, we definitely could see a lot of uh, Psy Storm drops. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of harassment that way. And other than that, yeah, they're going to have a lot of uh, resources, so this is going to be a really epic map for these two, and I should mention that this is the map that they are going to play twice. So, you know, it fits their styles, both of them, because they have a very similar style. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a very important game to watch, this first game here on Othello. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and one thing that I really think is uh, most interesting about the Protoss vs. Protoss matchup is that Zerg tends to have this inverted pendulum feel that whatever player screws up first will most likely lose. And then Terran vs. Terran, you have to be very forceful with your aggression. Once you get an advantage, you really have to keep pushing it until you finally win. But Protoss vs. Protoss has a nice mix of both, where both players can continue to be aggressive, but because probes die so quickly to those really devastating Storm and Reaver drops, that it's really, really uh, great for back-and-forth action. Indeed it is, and uh, with that being said, uh, let's go, hot bid. And welcome to the Razor TSL. This is the round of four. We have Draco. He is in the uh, bottom left of the map with Protoss. And Noni, he is in the top left of the map with Protoss. This is Othello. This is a very important game. The winner of this is guaranteed at least $2,000. Right now they're both sitting at $500. So this is really a very, very pressureful match. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how this is going to play out already because we see that they're relatively close in positions. And, I mean, we've already seen a lot of Protoss vs. Protosses on this map where a lot of players like to abuse that high ground ramp early on, kind of like you were talking about in the Jinfei vs. Cloud match with um, the aggressive Reaver harassment. So I'm interested to see if Draco's going to take, or excuse me, if Noni's going to take advantage of Draco's high ground cliff early on, seeing as it is directly south of him. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. He could definitely harass it a little bit, whether he throws some goons up there to try to hit some probes or uh, some Psy Storms drops a little bit later. But uh, we see now, uh, we have, uh, sorry, this is Draco. He's scouting into the top of the map. It looks like he will find Noni right away. Draco once again scouting right off. He has shown this quite a bit throughout this tournament, that he scouts extremely quickly. He really likes to see what his opponent's doing. You know, this may be just to uh, be careful. You know, he wants to see what his opponent's doing. He does not want to be cheesed. He knows if the game goes long, he is a definite favorite. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely one of the biggest strengths of having his mechanics as strong as Draco. A lot of times you just know the longer the game lasts, the more opportunities you have to let your strong overall play shine through and for your opponent to make more mistakes. 
And as we can see, that probe is now doing a little bit of harassment in Noni's main, taking a few hits, but not managing to take it out. And thus far, we just see both players playing extremely standardly. No sort of aggressive two-gate or fast expand, just everyone's favorite old fast uh, cybernetics core fast gas build. Yeah, they're mirroring each other really closely right now. Both of them pumping out a Zealot first thing, you know, they gotta block that ramp. And uh, we see... Sorry, yeah, we, we see... see uh, we see this pylon over in Draco's base. Uh, he's blocking any manor pylons by putting that there. Uh, manor pylon, of course, being something that will trap probes in the minerals. And so that is a very smart move by him. I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw a second one up near the gas. Uh, stopping things like that is very important because if you, you know, get behind it all in minerals in this PvP, your opponent can really get ahead of you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, once you get at the highest levels of StarCraft, you're just operating on the most razor-thin margin, and it's just really important to keep up all those little tiny things. And we also see both players producing a second Zealot and getting a Cybernetics Core at almost exactly the same time. So again, nothing too fancy going on here, but again, just the nice little subtle things to notice, such as this pylon placement, are really the hallmarks of expert play. Any sort of subtle advantage you can get, or little tiny thing you can avoid, such as this little pylon placement, really just does light years of good for you. Oh, indeed it does. And uh, we see that, yeah, this second Zella is coming out. They are both chasing the probes. It's going to be really important, whoever can keep their probe alive the longest. Because, uh, you know, the longer you have that probe in there, the longer you have to see if they take any tech. Uh, if one of them loses the probe first, he's going to be playing blind longer, and that is an advantage for the other player so much so that it can just turn the game around you know you kill that probe and you can you know go dts you can go reaver whatever you want and meanwhile your opponent has not got any tech yet and here we go the dragoons now finally popping out looks like they will be able to chase away these probes at this point yeah and again we see still an almost identical mirroring of the players except noni it looks like has begun his robotics bay a little bit earlier than Draco has. We still don't see anything from Draco. Ah, there we go. The f uh, second gateway is being thrown down now. And it's really important to note that uh, placement of that robotics facility by Noni. This is definitely going to allow him to take that expansion just a little bit more easier, because when the Reaver pops out, it just has to walk down the ramp. So that's definitely a another one of those little subtle points. A lot of players like to make their robotics bay at the back corner of their, of their main. But still, this is really subtle but very critically important play by Noni thus far. Yeah, this is something we saw out of White Raw in earlier rounds. You know, he likes to make that Robox facility right near the ramp, rally those Reavers down. You know, you don't spend that extra money on the shuttle, and you can get a very quick nexus. But it looks like Noni is spending the money on the shuttle. He do ha he does have two Zealots there with it, so it looks like we will be seeing a uh, Reaver drop coming up pretty quickly out of him. And Draco, in the meantime, he's just pumping off these two gates. He does add his own uh, robotics facility, but I expect more that we'll probably see Observer first out of him. Yeah, both players are just playing a very sort of standard, straightforward, safe style. Uh, one thing that is really nice about Draco's placement is by having these Dragoons and these Zealots out front, it does give a little bit more pressure to Noni should he send a scouting probe. We see these two Dragoons advancing towards Noni's base. Should this get involved with any sort of scouting probe, it's very confusing because you don't know if your opponent is expanding, you don't know if Draco's getting ready to move out, and look at that. Draco just leaves those Dragoons right in the middle of the map. If you come across those and aren't expecting it, it can leave a real unnerving feeling, even though nothing has actually happened. Yeah, that's right. That's a nice psychological move there by Draco. If he catches a random probe, you know, maybe even a shuttle going in a weird direction, uh, that type of thing can really throw off your opponent. They're like, what is he doing out there? Is he, is he attacking me? Is he... What, what is this? And, it, you know, it's, it's just another thing that these players are doing. They want to go on to the next round. They want to hit the TSL Finals. It's just such a big deal. And we see now Noni, it looks like he has actually got an Observer before uh, his Reaver. So he's going to be scouting Draco right away. He's playing extremely, extremely safe. And in the meantime, we see that uh, Draco, he is getting the shuttle and then an Observer. So just slightly different build orders, but Noni's Reaver will certainly be faster. Yeah, and even though Noni did get that faster Reaver, if you'll note right now, Noni's food is right hanging around 50, whereas Draco's is almost at 60. So by getting that second gateway up, Draco has a few more Dragoons, maybe has a little bit more flexibility. 
And I'm interested to see if Noni is going to be able to pull off any sort of harass with these Reavers. He's not moving out with the shuttle yet. He's waiting for that second Reaver. Once you get that critical second Reaver, it makes uh, an early push a lot more effective. And if Draco's uh, second Reaver himself is just slightly behind, that small difference can become a huge disadvantage when that push comes out. Oh, and it will, but uh, as you said, Draco is ahead in the supply still. He's up about uh, 10 supply, actually, 65 versus 55. So that's a pretty big deal, especially when Noni's going to be the one who wants to put on the pressure here with his build, because uh, the reinforcements from Draco's base are going to be right there. So Draco looks like he will be able to hold anything that Noni does do. But, uh, you know, they both do have observers in each other's bases, so they do realize what's going on. So, you know... We see Noni come right out, he makes the Nexus, and it looks like Draco is going to follow right up making a Nexus as well. So these two know exactly what's going on, and they are not going to play stupid here. And we see, look at this, we have uh, Noni coming down the middle of the map. Looks like he may want to put on some pressure, still Draco with no Nexus, there it goes. He's almost got this second Reaver out, and here we go, the Reaver's dropped, oh, and he's, Reaver a couple shot. scarabs go off. Oh, he kills a one Zealot, the other Zealot very hurt, and it looks like Draco's in a hard position here. Noni pushing right in, oh, very nice Reaver scarab right there he brings out his uh, reaver as well oh my god noni with a lot more dragoons right now this is looking very bad for draco wow. draco oh and he loses the shuttle oh the two reavers in that shuttle oh, noni loses god. that is a big big deal draco cancels that nexus and pulls back into his main he does have two reavers now so noni turns around that was big what an incredible life-saving move that Draco just pulled off there. He was absolutely against the wall right there. You saw that his second Reaver, as we mentioned earlier, that second Reaver just being a few seconds too late could have cost him the game right there. Noni moved in with more Dragoons, those two Reavers, and just absolutely crush Draco's expansion attempt. But now Noni has the positional advantage. He has a little bit more map control. That expansion's up earlier. So right now is one of the most tense moments in the game. We see that Reaver coming in for Draco, getting ready for the mineral line, but Noni with perfect precision moves all his pros back immediately. And now that slow shuttle starting to look in a little bit more of a dangerous territory as he's flying in a slow fashion all over Noni's face. Oh, what a tense start to the match. Oh, it is. And uh, although Noni does have this expansion, Draco with a big supply gap over him. We have uh, Noni at 62 and Draco at 76 here. So Draco looks like he is going to put on a lot of pressure now. He's added a, a few gates. He's actually adding a fifth gate. So he's going to have five gates plus Reavers. He's got three Reavers so far. One in that shuttle, two back at home. So uh, it looks like Draco is probably going to try to go over and bust Noni pretty quickly here. Yeah, this is a really clever sort of transition that you'll see a lot of Protoss players make when they're up against the wall or they feel that their opponent's army is going to be a little too Dragoon heavy and low on Reavers, which is exactly the position that uh, Noni is in right now. Draco killed off that shuttle. He knows there's not going to be an excessive amount of Reavers, so he can throw down a lot of gateways like this, blood with Zealots, and then start putting a ton of pressure on his opponent. We do see that Draco backed off a little bit. He canceled that fifth gateway and is now just taking the expansion on his own. But that shuttle is still up there at the top, and with those speed elves coming out, Draco will be in a good opportunity to put some pressure back on his opponent. And we still see that Draco is sitting at 90 food, and Noni's only at 75. That's just an amazing play by Draco to remain in that lead. It is, and now we see uh, Draco going into the center of the map. He has a few Zealots with his Dragoons. Looks like his Reavers are trying to get up there. Too slow, sorry. And uh, Noni, he may be caught here. He runs away. He sees this army moving up. He is definitely outnumbered right now. If uh, Draco can engage him with all of these Reavers at once, it could be very good for him. But again, these Reavers just so slow, taking forever to get into the center of the map. No shuttle, uh, and Draco is not making a second shuttle, so still trying to harass the top of uh, Noni's base with this shuttle in the Reaver and Noni moving out so Draco being very smart right here he brings in the Reaver and it looks like he will be dropping it when the Dragoons are out of position oh. and here we go a nice oh. Scarab gets two probes it looks like a nice little move there by Draco luring Noni out of his natural expansion oh, and here the, the two armies clash and then move away it's, oh, it's just such a critical um, uh, time to just control all your units just perfectly because one uh, set of good Reaver shots can just decimate your army and here comes Draco positioning his units, and the speed zealots moving up, but those two slow reavers in the back. Draco's really going to need to get those on the battle front if they want to be effective, but the two reavers get pinned off at the front, taking some damage. Draco's reavers shooting right into the center of Noni's dragoons, but Noni just has so many more units. This is a quick turnaround right here, and Draco 
turns tail and runs. He has two of his Reavers left, so it looks like he is not in too much trouble yet. But uh, Noni is just catching right up. It looks like he does have the army advantage despite Draco being ahead supply-wise. Draco right now at 91 with Noni at 78. It's uh, quite a weird predicament. I guess Noni is a little bit pro blight here. And Draco now into a defensive position. Noni coming down, filtering his goons. He's got to get his Reavers down there as well. And, uh, you know, I... Here comes the uh, Reaver. It's behind the natural of Draco here. Nice Reaver drop right there. And oh. two probes gone. And will he get some more probes? Yes, oh. he does get some more probes. Oh, and he oh, loses the shuttle the with shuttle. the Reaver. That is a big deal right there. These Reaver counts are very important here in PvP. And look at this. Draco coming out with his speed zealots, with his Dragoons. But Noni with a nice positional advantage. But the Reavers come out. Noni may want to run away from this. And he realizes that he moves away one of his groups and now his other group. And... Draco just pushing right back with the Reaver advantage. That's just so key in this matchup. The instant that Draco killed that speed shuttle, he immediately moved out. Not having the Reavers in that army is just so cr or is such a crushing, crushing position to be in. We see Draco starting to move forward with his army because he knows that if Noni doesn't have any more Reavers, then he can just walk right in the front. That Speed Zealot Dragoon combination is becoming increasingly lethal with fewer Reavers on Noni's side. We see Draco carefully, though, repositioning himself through the map and just continuing to add more probes to his expansion to rebuild after losing that handful of probes in the Reaver drop. And you know, even though we see that Noni's at 84 food and Draco's at 113, there's not too drastically a difference between the sizes of their army. Yeah, but that can only mean uh, more probes for Draco, so, you know, eventually it should pay off. But we see Noni, he is keeping his money down a little bit more. He's only got <laughs> just under 200 minerals basically the whole time. Where uh, And finally, Draco does start to spend. He was up there around 600. But, uh, you know, right now, Draco, look at this. He is taking the 6 o'clock base. Looks like he sent a bunch of uh, probes out to his natural because his main is almost mined out here. And you can see Noni's main, really quite a few patches left there. So, yes, there is quite a big uh, probe difference. But with Draco taking this quick uh, third base... His economy is going to get better than Noni's, better and better and better. So, uh, you know, Noni, the onus is on him here. He needs to get something happening pretty quickly. And we see that he is making a couple Dark Templars in his main. He does have a few Reavers. Uh, his robotics no longer making anything out of it, but he is a little bit Gaslight. So uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see exactly what he wants to get done with these DTs. Yeah, I'm also really interested uh, in Draco's choice of expansion. The fact that he took that 6 o'clock Mineral Natural as opposed to the, the closer and, you know, potentially juicier expansion, the, the gas natural that's in the center, uh, perhaps Draco was feeling just a little bit uncomfortable with his unit advantage and felt that the 6 o'clock expansion would be a little bit safer, or perhaps that he just didn't feel that he needed the, uh, the gas too quickly. But perhaps probably the biggest consideration in Draco's part is just that little small tiny patch of high ground makes those center expansions so delicate to control. Unless you are really good about watching that high ground, it's just impossible not to lose all your probes sometimes. And we see Draco now finally transferring all those units, throwing down a cannon and getting that critical plus one upgrade that's so essential in this matchup. Yeah, and we see now uh, Draco, his supply is actually shooting up pretty quickly now. He's uh, up at 135. And it's because he has more gates, you know. He has about six gates right now, whereas Noni is sitting on four. So over time, Draco is just going to pull further and further ahead here. And Noni, he's going to have to get something done. He has a good amount of Dragoons in the center. He has those two Reavers in the shuttle, a few DTs with his army. And I think he knows that he has to, you know, start pressuring here. Draco is starting to pop out these High Templars. And he also has Reavers. In fact, more Reavers. He has three as well as about five High Templars with his army. So Noni's army is starting to look a little bit pitiful against Draco's here. Yeah, it's really hard for Draco not to pull ahead in the position that he's in. He killed off both of those shuttles and was really good about putting some pressure back on his opponent. And again, that's another one of those classic hallmarks of, of a strong player, is that they don't actually, a lot of the times, directly attack their opponent. They will, however, bring their army close up into a really aggressive position, and a lot of players will panic and perhaps throw down a few more gateways, cut back on probe production, maybe build a few extra defensive structures. And it's that little advantage that you can get just by appearing scary that really allows you to extend your lead ever so slightly. And we're just seeing that all come together right now. All those extra probes at the start, picking off those shuttles, getting uh, right in Noni's face at the right times. Noni's just slowly, slowly falling behind. We see that 
Draco is now taking that 5 o'clock gas natural expansion. We see a pylon beautifully positioned to check for any counterattacks. And right now, Draco is rapidly on his way to maxing out his army. He is, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that you said that about what Draco is doing here. It's a very high-level move that he's showing us, and, you know, he has more experience than Noni. Draco, he's been around in the scene a long time. He's been to Korea. You know, he's won just about everything a foreigner can win, and, you know, that that's paying off. Noni, on the other hand, he's a little bit new to his skill. You know, just this year is a huge breakout year for Noni, so Draco definitely showing every edge he has against Noni in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Now's a key time for Noni, where he knows he's probably behind in the size of his army. So he's not going to do too much direct aggression. He's going to try to do a little bit of harassment and wait till he's maxed, and perhaps be a little more even. And right along the left side of the map, going towards uh, Draco's expansion, we see a shuttle with a Zealot 2 Doc Templar and a High Templar. Draco carefully pulls his probes away, but those two DTs get dropped on the left side of the map, going into Draco's main. I don't see any observers anywhere in sight. Those can end up doing a lot of damage should he be able to take out some of those critical structures. And here they go. They go right in towards the uh, mineral line there, but Draco has mined that a long time ago. They start picking off these gas probes and just harassing a couple of pylons here. It looks like uh, but Noni is going to go and attack some critical structures, such as this Templar Archives. And this oh, is just going to be storm quite a storm drop at the expansion. A storm drop just happened. I didn't see how many kills. I just went back to see a little bit of electricity and no probes mining. It has seven kills, getting two more probes, bringing it up to a total of nine. That is an excellent blow to the economy. That's exactly what Noni was looking for to get back into this game. And we right now see that Noni is sitting tight at 175 food, and Draco's sitting at 174. And look at the disorganization of Draco's army. There's units in his main, units out in his front. Draco does have that extra expansion, but Noni has a little bit of leverage with this time and this food advantage that he has, or Psy, I should say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Draco, though, he just keeps expanding here. He's taking this third base that's his third natural. He's got that bottom right uh, natural running, as you said before, and 6 o'clock running, as well as his natural. So his economy is just looking totally badass. Meanwhile, Noni, he's got uh, two bases mined. He's finally mined out in his main. And Noni looks like he's just starting to position. Both of them are right around the maxed out supply. You know, it's hard to attack at this point. You've got to really get your storms off, really position your units well so that they can get maximum surface area on your opponent. So that's going to be the next stage of this game. You know, they've harassed each other's economy a little bit, but, you know, there's not too much else they can do when they're maxed out. So uh, we should see a little bit more action from here on out. Yeah, this is a really key time. Both players are max. Draco's taking more expansions. Noni, although I don't think he's scouted enough, has to know that Draco is getting a lot more resources than he is at this point. So what's going to be the key deciding factor is the makeup of each of the opponent's armies. And I think that's a huge mistake that a lot of amateurish players will make, is that they don't focus en enough on the composition of their units once they're maxed. Most players are more comfortable in the 100 food range to 130 food range. Oh, and, and hold that thought for just a minute. We have two Reavers moving to the expansion of Dracos at 5 o'clock. Cannon's doing some damage to the Reavers, but Noni manages to take the cannon out. We see some of Draco's units rushing over there, but the probes are hanging tight, not doing anything. Another cannon falls. The probes are getting more and more vulnerable by the second, but it looks like Draco's army is going to show up just in time to fend off the Reaver drop. Oh, my God. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> the Reavers die in the shuttle. That is painful. Noni's economy is just not that good. He does not want to be losing expensive Reavers in an expensive shuttle. He only killed, you know, a few probes and three cannons there. So that was not that effective. A Reaver drop, especially for losing it. And now we see uh, Noni in the middle of the map picking off some of these probes that were being transferred across the map. And uh, Noni definitely, he's getting into position here. But Draco, look at all these cannons over the third natural in the bottom right. That is, <laughs> that is something that's going to be extremely uh, difficult for Noni to attack into. But it looks like he may be going anyway he wants to clear off this side of the map he does not want Draco getting so far ahead in supply but Draco he's bringing this army up and uh, you know it looks like they're both max but he's attacking into cannons so this may go very well for Draco and here we go he's attacking into the cannons here Moving quite in. a few dragoons and Psy Storm's going off at the Draco's units behind the cannons and Draco he does not have his whole army here it looks like he's trying to circle around and flank but uh, Noni's in pretty good position here. It looks like he left some units out on the side. It's slowing down the flank reinforcements. And uh, look at this. He's just pounding into Draco's army. Draco with a lot of Dragoons. He's bringing up quite a few Archons to try to help with these speed zealots. And will it work? I am not too sure. Noni with an excellent position here. Nice side storms going off. 
Dragoon's being hurt quite a bit, and oh, we have a little bit of lag. Around. Yeah, there are, and uh, more and more storms all over the place, all over but these goons. Not much uh, dodging going on, and it looks like Noni may come out on top here despite attacking into the cannons. Draco with very few units left here. Psy storms on the few goons that are left, and yes, it does look like uh, Noni may in fact break this expansion, but Draco, he is rallying over more goons. A lot of goons coming over now, so a few uh, Templars as well, but uh, Noni just on top of things. All his goons very hurt, though, and finally he does have to run away, but he did kill that Nexus, so that was a really impressive attack there by Noni. That was an absolutely miraculous push by Noni. I mean, I'm quite shocked that he was able to rush right into cannons, kill them off, and then continue to take out the rest of Draco's army. I mean, I, really, it shows how important the concave is in, in Protoss versus Protoss. If you just have a bigger concave, your Dragoons can do more damage. And now, at this point, now that both players are unmaxed, it's time for them to figure out how are they going to deal with this new uh, food gap that they have. Draco is rebuilding an army a little bit more slowly. He doesn't have as many gateways, but he is tossing in a few Arbiters, which are going to be a key helpful unit, especially if Noni isn't too careful about getting some observers out. Noni now has that expansion going on at the 2 o'clock. And we also see that Draco is probably going to be taking this bottom right expansion. Yes, he does start the bottom right main. But again, something I was briefly mentioning earlier about unit composition. When you're maxed, you don't want to have too many zealots in Protoss versus Protoss. You want a lot of your units to be gas-based, because those are the ones that are really going to do a lot of the damage, and the zealots are just going to get burned up. But at this key time, where you just swung an advantage, you're going to see uh, Noni right now flood with a lot of zealots, because it allows you to be a lot more aggressive. The mobility and the overall strength of zealots comes in the fact that they are relatively cost-effective. But once you get maxed, you just want to have a powerful one-punch style army. And that's really what we saw Noni do in that bottom expansion. His army composition was just a little bit stronger than Draco's. But now with all these zealots, uh, we're really going to be looking to see if Noni's going to be moving out when his food gets a little bit higher. But it looks like Draco's pulling ahead with around 170 right now. You know, that's so true. We see that Draco also has uh, more speed zealots than before with his army. You know, they just, they make quick, they run quick, so uh, nice choice there. And Draco, he already has out two Arbors, and these could be really huge. You know, if he just randomly snipes an Observer that's with Noni's army, he could get a huge advantage with a completely uh, invisible army. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of ridiculous in and of itself. And also the spells of these <laughs> Arbiters are just deadly. I mean, if he does a recall into uh, Noni's base while Noni can't really attack, attack him if Noni's out of position, uh, you know, that could just change the game around, kill some gateways, then kill Noni's army, and you're going to have a huge tempo advantage. And look here, we lo it looks like uh, Noni is getting ready to attack into the bottom right. Meanwhile, Draco, he's bringing over his units. Draco, with a huge amount of units right now, he's about 20 supply up on Noni, so Draco is just macroing extremely quickly. His better economy throughout the game is really paying off at this point, and uh, he's going to remax far before Noni. Yeah, and plus Noni's in a little bit of a tight spot because he did flood with Zealots right when he lost his main army. But now that we're getting close to max, if you just take a brief look at Draco's army down at the uh, 5 o'clock expansion, there's a lot more Dragoons and Archons and a lot more Gas-type units. You see some more Zealots coming from Draco's main, but overall Draco's army is uh, overall a lot better for a maxed late game type style. And we do see a few Reavers hanging around for Draco, just in good solid positions. So it looks that Draco isn't looking to push out anytime soon. Draco's just looking to abuse this mineral advantage, which is actually pretty nice for Noni, because Noni's looking uh, to get a better opportunity to jump back in this game. Yeah, we see Noni. He is taking that top right. So Noni catching up in the bases a little bit, but Draco, he's just adding cannons and cannons and cannons because he is maxed out. He has nothing else to spend his minerals on, so why not? And, uh, you know... If Noni's going to keep on attacking into cannons all game, it may get very difficult, especially with the uh, mineral disadvantage. And we see Noni, he is positioning, and look at this unit movement. We have Noni, he's going into the center, and Draco just keeps on moving back and forth. He does not want Noni to be able to get into a good position over near uh, his bases. And so here we go, Noni is charging in. Quite a few Zealots, quite a few Archons, and uh, Draco is in a very good position right here. He has his two Arbiters, they have a lot of Mon on him. We'll see if he casting spells. Nice Psy Storm's going off. Oh, a very oh, nice awesome. stasis. Two oh. stasis. He's got almost every Archon stasis up. And Draco is just pulling ahead in this battle no matter what. Those were amazing stasis. And the stasis. Observer is down. Oh. There's no Observer. 
No, the observer, it looks like it doomed. is down. That is a huge, huge deal. These invisible units cannot be it. If Draco can move up his arbor a little bit and cloak the rest of the units, Noni's going to have to withdraw. Noni's supply is dropping way down now. He's losing his entire army, and when these things unfreeze, they are just going to be sitting ducks here, you know? They're just going to die instantly to Draco's huge army. So now we have Draco. He's sitting tight at 175. Noni's at 141. Draco taking a yet another base over at 3 o'clock. So uh, Draco, he's pulled far, far ahead, and things are starting to look quite grim for Noni. Yeah, absolutely brilliant play by Draco. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, we see the units finally do on stasis, and then just as expected, they burn up almost immediately without any observers around. Draco almost max again, Noni re-scrambling to get a bigger army. But we can clearly see that Draco's in a much better position, and Draco knows it. We see that he's stopped taking this defensive stance. He's moving out with a nice army, good unit composition, a lot of high Templar, Dragoon, Zealots, and those three Arbiters are going to be so helpful. You can stasis any um, Archons. If a group of Zealots is too clustered, he'll just pick those off immediately. We see Draco going right over to this 3 o'clock center expansion. Oh, those probes just got there. Oh, one Psy Storm away from complete economic devastation. Draco's and army see, repositioning. Uh, oh, sorry, we ahead. see that. Sorry about that. Uh, Draco, he's coming up. He is maxed out. Noni is having a hard time of it. He's about 150 right now. And Draco attacking right into the top right, third expansion. It's going to fall quite easily. Noni coming down with what units he does have, but it is just a measly army compared to this total death mass coming out of Draco here. He's got three Arbors there. He's got so many Dragoons that, uh, you know, I'm not sure what Noni can do at this point. He's, he's just so far behind in supply. Draco is just cleaning him up. He's pushing him around, and Noni's army is just going to be out of position here. And here we go. A Red Archon coming up, and a lot of side oh. storms on those Arbors. Oh, he kills one of them. Wait Very nice one. feedback right there. But uh, still, two Arbiters left, and Noni's army is just too small. Look at this huge surface area advantage by Draco there. He's just pounding those goons. Oh my, a nice so stasis goes off. Things. Five goons stuck there. Uh, just beautiful play here by Draco. Noni looks like he is going to be just tapping out any moment here. Yeah, even stasising the probes, just to let Noni know he can spend the extra mana if he wants to. Those probes dropping like flies, this expansion cannot stay alive much longer. The four zealots at the left just aren't going to do it. And he's still scrambling, staying in the game, seeing if there's any little slight advantage he can pull right at these last few moments. But even then, with Archons warping back at his main, this expansion is going to fall inevitably. Yeah, and Noni, he just, he cannot max out again. He's going to lose this top right, as you said, and that leaves him with just one base. Meanwhile, Draco, he has one, two, three, four, five bases mining. So, I mean, this game is all but over. Noni's going to be exiting any moment here. And this has just been beautiful play by Draco. Really amazing how he just put Noni up against the wall. He got his economy going so much better. And Draco is showing why he was the last uh, foreigner pro gamer. Indeed, I mean, a lot of the little subtle moves that we saw Draco pull throughout this game really shone through by the end. And we see Draco doing a little bit of cleanup, and Noni eventually is forced to type out. And GG, Draco takes the lead. He goes up 1-0 against Noni in the Razor TSL round of four. And, uh, you know, that's a big deal. This is a He only has to win two more matches. The pressure is on Noni. And uh, Draco, he is just looking pretty much invincible. That was just such brilliant play. Yeah, it was quite exceptional. I mean, some of the things that we talked about in the game, about these little things that Draco were doing, you really just saw how significant of an advantage they eventually pulled for him. I mean, at the, uh, at the start of the game, we were just watching that even though these armies looked about the same, we saw that Draco's food was slowly pulling ahead at the exact same moments in the game, even though they were both doing virtually identical builds. We saw Draco sitting at about 75 food with Noni at about uh, 63. And getting that significant of an advantage that early on really shows you how subtly excellent this timing is. And I mean... It uh, does. Uh, also a and, lot of uh, things such as uh, Draco's late game um, unit mix was really excellent, especially after that uh, first big attack. Totally. And uh, it looks like the second map that we're going to be playing on here is uh, Withering Heights. Uh, this is 
for uh, Noni versus Draco, of course. Now, Wuthering Heights PvP, this is a kind of interesting map, you know, the mains are very low ground, so there's no ramps, you know, we may see more Zealots used on this map. Uh, you know, who, who do you think, for style-wise, who do you think uh, this map is better for? Oh gosh, it's a really, really tough choice. Um, you know, I, I do, if I had to, I would probably give a little bit of an advantage to Noni on this map, because I do know that Noni does like to play in a very aggressive manner, and we definitely saw that last game on Othello, where Draco ended up taking the bottom concave of the map, uh, and kind of sat passively and positioned cannons well and units well. Noni was really good about moving his units around and being a lot more fluid towards the late game and making a lot more critical incision strikes and this sort of thing. So since Withering Heights is such a wide open map, uh, I really think that that's going to be nice for just Noni's style in general. And because both players have such superb micro-macro and this sort of thing, it's really going to come down to game management and aggressive play. Who can make better decisions with more aggressive opportunities on the map? I've totally got to agree with you there because, you know, this map, taking a third base on this map is absolutely ludicrous. Those mineral only bases, they are so far away from uh, the naturals and the mains of the players. And those middle bases are just easily attacked from the top with dragoons, side storms, whatever you want. And, you know, they just don't have that many minerals, minerals at them. So, uh, you know, the style that we've been seeing Draco play, you know, as you said, it's just not as good on this map. So I'm, I'm feeling it for Noni here. Yeah, and plus, I mean, even if you look at the natural expansions, there, there isn't really any sort of high ground to abuse on anything except those obviously extremely vulnerable expansions in the center of the map. So, I mean, a lot of the Reaver and Storm Harass that you'd see on a map like Othello or Lost Temple or some more popular maps, you just don't get that kind of opportunity on this map. It's just going to be a lot about who has the best build to get the most mid-game muscle so that they can take those extra expansions. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of quick expansion-oriented builds so both players can power hard off two bases, and then that is what will be able to secure those third expansions for both of them. And uh, with that being said, Hotbid, uh, let's go.